Hi, welcome. This is Tasha Bergson Michelson. I'm a part of the search education team at Google, and I am so excited to have Shauna Par Partington here with me today. Shauna, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, Shauna, you are um, a sous chef here at Google through Bon Appetit, correct? Yes. So what I'm hoping you can talk to us about today is um, before I started working at Google, I didn't really know about corporate chefs. Can you talk to me a little bit about, about what your position at, at Google is, is like? Um, so I am a corporate chef. Um, we're considered corporate catering, uh, which means we service corporate industries in corporate setting restaurants. So we can mm -hmm. corporate catering. Um, in a restaurant style. So how does that um, differ kind of as a work or how is it the same as being a chef say in a typical restaurant that we might think about? Uh, so a typical restaurant you would have people come and sit down and they would order specific things. Um, say for breakfast they sat down and ordered an omelet, uh, breakfast potatoes, toast. Where in corporate Chef, we design the menus and we have a team, a staff that puts those menus out where they're pre-designed for um, the client. And they come in, they can look at menus for other cafes on campus or wherever they're at, and they can decide where they want to eat depending on the menu that we put out per day or per meal period. That so, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So instead of having a menu that you look at, you go to a cafe and there's many different options for that day. So. Okay. So then what does that mean for your work day? Can you tell us a little bit about what your day looks like? Um, on a typical day, I come in um, fairly early and get my crew situated, get my product in-house because um, deliveries start at about 4.30 in the morning. I'm sorry, by, by get your product in-house, you mean you get the supplies you use for, uh, for cooking? Right. So I place my orders, and they come in the next day and um, to a loading dock where we have a receiver that checks them in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have things that didn't come in that day, so we have to adjust what we're going to do for the day. So I make sure all my, my items that I've ordered for that day have come in. And I make sure all my staff is here, and then we start prepping out and producing what we need for service. Um, and I have two crews. I have an AM crew and a PM crew, and sometimes they overlap. So uh, we have to make adjustments in the cafe for staffing too many people in one place. Um, so that's pretty much my day, is getting everyone started, making sure we have our product, getting the product out for service time, um, and just making sure everything's the best quality we can give the mm -hmm. client. So. Now, you talked about the menu. Who sets the menu? Is that part of your job? So part of my job is to set my menu. I have um, some guidelines I have to follow. Mm -hmm. There, it, it's very loose to what I have to follow, but my menu um, needs to have some vegan vegetarian items on there, um, some healthier options. We can do some unhealthy stuff, but we need to have the whole spectrum of good food and in the middle. So I designed the entire menu from start to finish um, on my own. My mm -hmm. Executive chef can look at it and give me ideas. Um, mm -hmm. My staff gives me ideas, but ultimately it's up to myself to decide what I want to put on my menu. Well, I have to say I've, I've been guilty of enjoying some of the unhealthy things on your menu very much, but also some of the healthy ones. Um, so can you talk to us for a minute about what do you love about your job? What are you excited about getting up in the morning and coming in? Because you do get up early. I know I've seen you quite early in the hallway. Yeah, I, most mornings I'm up at 4 a.m. Um, I like so many things about my job. 
Um, it's hard to really pinpoint one or two things. Um, I love my schedule. I work Monday through Friday. Um, I'm usually off between four and six. I love the fact that I can use so many different products, um, local products. Um, I, I just am given this open platter of everything I can use at my fingertips. I get to write the menu, I get to have a vision, and I get to see my vision go from in my head to the plate. Um, I love being able to teach my employees that maybe haven't gone to culinary school or they, they're interested in food and they want to learn more. I love that. I love, um, I absolutely love when you make something and somebody says, I love that so much. Can I have the recipe? I love that part of it. Um, I love the people part of it. I, I love being hands-on. I'm not stuck in my office. I can be in my office, but I can also be in my kitchen. Um, I just love all of it, from behind the scenes to being in the middle of it to um, just being in a place that is so open um, to feeding people in a way that makes them happy and productive, and I just love, I love my job. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, so what are some of the kind of exciting challenges, the things that are hard but gratifying to work through? Hard but gratifying to work through. So, um, well, you have to balance your budget every, every week. I have a, a budget that I have to stay within. Um, so some weeks that can be a challenge depending on what I decide to put on my menu that week. Um, and then if it's something really great on the menu and you go through more of it and you have to reorder it, that could be a challenge because you didn't really have it in your mind that it was going to be that great that you need to reorder it. So you have to figure out your quantities. Um, that, that part is, is, is um, exciting, but it can be difficult. The, 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 the stuff that's the hardest for me right now is dealing with... Um, the human resource part of um, my work. So dealing with all the different personalities and how to get all of them to work together and then when a HR issue comes up, how do you deal with that the right way? Um, we're a corporate in we're corporate so it's not as easy just to let people go or there's a process you have to go through. So I'm I'm really learning that part of my job that can be a challenge, but ultimately at the end it's a good challenge and it normally works out in the long run in everyone's behalf. So That's really exciting. So it's interesting to hear you talking about, um, you know, a there's a lot of your job that goes beyond just when I think of being a chef that you're just cooking, but there's, you really have a very wide range of tasks that you do as part of your job. Yes. Yes. So, of course, as you know, that I'm really curious about the research portion of that. So I'm hoping that you can share with me a little bit about, about that and about how you do research as part of your work. Okay. So I have kind of a funny story of um, research in a kitchen. So I wasn't always a sous chef here at Google. I um, worked my way up to become a sous chef, but there was a point where an, a product came into the kitchen and I had asked my partner uh, uh, at the time and my chef where this product came from. And both of them have, had an answer that I wasn't satisfied with. I, I didn't agree with where it came from. And it was celery root, actually, is what it was. And I said, is this really the root of celery? Hence, celery root, right? And they said, no, it's something different. And I said, no, I really don't believe it's something different. So, of course, I Google it. And I came up, it was really the root of the celery, and I had to tell them it's the root of the celery. So, I, you know, it was kind of fun because I got to kind of prove to them it was really what I thought it was. But on a research, I'm, if, I, if I want to use something and I'm not 100% sure what it is, I want to see a picture of it. I want to know where it came from. I want to know its origins. A lot of times I want to know the nutritional value of it just 
in case somebody comes to me and says, hey, what is this product? So I'm constantly, I have two screens at work, which is very typical for us. And nine times out of ten, you'll see one of my screens, if you were to walk in my office, is my research screen. And it's where I type in, um, let's say, quinoa. What is quinoa? And I can type it in, and then I always go to images because I am a visual person, and I want to see what it looks like. And I'll scroll down and look at it, and I'll click on a picture that I think is interesting to see what they have to say. Uh, a cut of meat. I want to know where that cut of meat comes from. So I'll say brisket, and then I go to images. I'm constantly looking at um, local foods, local you know creameries, cheese. Uh, Google it, I image it, I'm constantly researching a recipe, I have an idea, how can this work? Uh, a big visual, I have to see it to know if that's really what I want to do. Um, yeah. Or um, we're going to celebrate something, so I want to know the history of something. How do I find it? I, I read it. That's how I use research kitchen. That's very cool. And actually, it's funny because you're proving that, among other things, you're kind of psychic because that was a question we have from someone who's with us did ask just that question. Asked, how do you source your produce? How about meats? Do you use Google for that? Um, his other question is, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite food to prepare for others? Oops. Are you able to hear me? I know we're having a little connection lag here. What's Shana? my favorite? Yeah. So, so this is from, from one of our viewers who wants to know, what's your favorite food? I'm going to put it in chat so you can see as well. Um, and so pardon the typing. What is your favorite food? And how about favorite to prepare for others? Ah, hi, welcome back. <laughs> hi, Shauna, are you able to hear me better now? Yes. Great, okay. So the question, maybe, maybe. we'll figure it out. No. Um, so for those of you watching, I'm sorry, there's a little lag. We're having some connectivity issues, but we'll work through it. Um, so Shauna, what is your favorite food to prepare yourself and your favorite food to prepare for other people? Okay. You can hear me back? I'm, you I can, can hear me? You're beautiful. Okay, okay. So uh, my favorite food to prepare, prepare for myself and my favorite food to prepare, prepare for others. That's really difficult. Um, I really enjoy making biscuits. I love them. I love touching them and creating them from, you know, basically flour. And I'm not a pastry chef. I just happen to love making biscuits and how they the layers come and I just love it. So I love to make biscuits. Um, my favorite thing to make right now for others be a really popular um, item I've been doing for Googlers for a couple of months now and it's chicken and waffles. Uh, so I make a savory waffle and we brine chicken overnight and we fry it up and it's not healthy at all but um, we make a gravy as well and it's requested every Friday um, in my cafe as a pop-up item. I love making that for people because they absolutely love it. Um, but I don't have one specific thing because I really enjoy doing so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I like pork belly. I love doing that recently. Um, on the sweet side, because I'm not, a, I, I'm not a, a pastry chef, I do enjoy baking cakes um, for days and things like that. Anything that makes somebody really enjoy a food, I love to make it. That's, that, that sounds like a great answer. Actually, I'm curious now. So you've, we talked before about how your job involves a couple of different uh, skill sets beyond just cooking. Um, also, you just said a few times that you're not a pastry chef. So clearly there are a couple of different kinds of chefs that operate within a kitchen. So I'm going to ask you both 
I'm going to ask how you learned about the different kinds of chefs and how you decided what you wanted to do. Um, that was really difficult. I decided to go to culinary school. I really struggled on whether I wanted to go sweet or savory. And I thought the savory part would take me into a broader direction than just if I went to pastry. But on the flip side of that, I really do want to go back to school and do baking and pastry. Uh, in school, we got a little glimpse, one class, of baking and pastry, and I really loved it. It's completely different than savory. Savory, you can throw this in and that in, and it's one flavor. Baking and pastry is very scientific. So if you don't put mm. enough of this in and enough of that in, it doesn't turn out the way you want it to. So they're totally different uh, 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 sides or drums. Savory, you can be suitive, and it's you know turn out kind of what you think. Choose more scientific, but I would like to go and and dabble in in making a pastry more. So that, it was that's a, actually a hard decision. I took mm -hmm. the one I thought would to more, more open spaces. I guess is how I would describe that. I'm sorry, we're getting a little stuck again, so I'm going to I'm going to repeat what you just said so I make sure I understand. You said you looked at your uh, options and you decided on the one that you felt had the most career possibilities for you? Yes, that definitely. Was really, so, back to the research bent. How did you how did you figure that out? I mean, research isn't all online. Did you talk to people? Did you read about it by doing searching on Google? How how did you make this kind of decision? Um, oh, how did I make this decision? That's a tough question. How did I make that decision? Well, I looked into several different schools. Mm -hmm. So I went online and looked at what was going to be the best length or program length for me because I had to work and go to school at the same time because I had a family. And this was a total career change yep. for me. So I had to decide. Without I think Shauna froze again. We'll give her a second to come back with us. Let me know when I come back. Am I back? Am I back? No? Sorry, and I'm wondering if it's just me and I'm talking over you, in which case I apologize. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so how did I decide through research? I We're freezing kind of a lot. Okay, so Shauna, maybe it's me and not you, so I'm going to ask you, forgive me, I'm going to, and I'm sorry I interrupted. Are you back? Okay. Yep, go ahead. Um, so I just had to research my options of where I wanted to go, um, what was going to work financially for me, what was going to work uh, time wise for me. Uh, I had a short period of time I wanted to go to school for. So looking online at all the schools in my area really helped me decide what schools I wanted to look at and go tour and really um, and not going there and okay um, thank you so I'm so you've actually given I think uh, through this you've given a lot of advice about how to get started but to a, a high school student or a college student who wanted to go down this career path what can you tell us about what that individual should try to do? Um, uh, what should they do? I mean, to prepare and kind of be well set up. To be prepared and well set up. Well, I'll use my daughter. Yeah. So she actually just graduated and didn't really know what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So she um, applied here at, at 
on campus and she got a front of house position and now she actually works in the pastry department on campus and she really loves it. So for her, she didn't know what she really wanted to do. She did like to, to, to bake, that was something she mm -hmm. really enjoyed doing. And now she's actually found that she's in a kitchen and she thinks she really wants to pursue being a pastry chef. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion would be if you have any desire or you think you might want to be in the culinary, get a job, get a job at a restaurant. Um, I mean, to just starting a washer, you get the ambiance of what a kitchen is, how kitchens run, and it really gives you a sense of, is this really what I want to do? And if it really excites you still from the ground up, being a dishwasher or a butter or a prep person, you're just peeling potatoes, and you're still excited, you might want to consider going to school or at least looking into school. Um, because it's the only way you're going to find out if you really like it is if you actually get into the atmosphere itself. So, really interesting vocabulary. I'm hoping you can hear me. Perhaps. I I can hear you now. Great. Okay. Okay. So you used a lot of interesting vocabulary as you've been talking today. Okay. We talked about we have sous chef, executive chef, pastry chef, um, front of house. And furthermore, we're having adventures in Hangouts <laughs> as we go through this. Um, so, so there's all this vocabulary that you, that you use. And when you're searching in Google or other systems for information, um, sometimes when you have this specific vocabulary, it's easier to find information about what you're looking for. So, um, I'm sorry, I didn't warn you about this question. It's off the cuff. But I'm curious if you can think of a couple of terms. What words are good for um, people to know? One moment. Sorry. There we go. What words are good for people to know when they want to go searching to find out more? So getting a job and trying it is great. If they want to read up a bit too, what's some vocabulary that they should use? Um, well, this one's going to be, you said off the cuff and I wasn't ready for this one. But, I'm uh, sorry. No, 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 it's totally fine. I have um, spent the last few weeks trying to hire people um, for my kitchen and I'm looking for certain certain people that are going to fit in and they're going to thrive in my, in my cafe and everyone's going to be, a, it's going to be a happy place. But in that, I've had to, a key term that not too many people know if, if they're not in the industry is the word. And I, I'm sorry, can you say the word one more time? It's stage, S-T-A-G-E. Uh, okay. And it, and what is it's a working interview so when you're in the culinary world you come in for a stage and you you get to actually spend four hours in the kitchen that you're going to work in I had no idea what that was until I got into school and they said you're going to go stage and I'm like what are you going to stage what's that mean and I still find people that are excuse me not real familiar mm -hmm. and I them you're going to stage. So that would be a good one to look up. What, it, what actually is a stage? Because if you want to get a job in the field, you have to go stage. And it's not go sit down for 15 minutes. It's actually filling out an application and you get in a kitchen and they see what you're going to do. So that was kind of a fun one. But other key terms, like I said, uh, uh, front of house, back of house, those are they're two different entities in a kitchen. Um, mm -hmm. We're not one. We're very separate. We do work together. Um, depending on the kitchen you work in, you're going to want to know French terminology um, for cuts or dices. They all have their own French words. Um, mm -hmm. So you could look those things up. Oh my goodness. So, so maybe someone could look up a glossary of cooking terms 
or a glossary of culinary terms um, in order to figure out what some of these words are. Yeah. Um, may I ask you another question that comes in from someone watching? Yes. Um, the question is, do you research ingredients for new dishes or as substitutions for existing dishes? Well, do you use substitutions? Oh, and, and what kind of substitutions do you use for non-dairy or vegan or vegetarian? Uh, I'm going to answer the last one first. Okay, because I know you specialized in that for a while. I, did. I worked in a cafe for two years and it, I was on the vegan vegetarian um, sides and main dishes and I'm not vegan or vegetarian I do enjoy eating some of the dishes though I, I, I absolutely have enjoyed some of them so uh, one of my favorite things to do and if you're vegan or vegetarian you're gonna, I'm hoping you're gonna be really familiar with this but if you're not you're you're gonna say this is a weird concept but instead of taking cream or milk uh, uh, but we you take cashews and you put them in a mixer or a hand version blender and you just blend them with water, a little lemon juice and a little garlic and it makes this paste almost and you can put it in, one time I did yuba skins which are tofu um, that you can cut that make noodles, you know they look like mm -hmm. a noodle and you can make a cream sauce, like I made a mushroom mm -hmm. sauce but it was, there was no cream in it, it was just what we call cashew cream. Mm -hmm. so, that we've made mushroom soups out of it. It just gives a nice creamy texture with no cream at all in it. Um, so that would be a substitution um, that you could use. But there are sometimes I do try to substitute things to make them healthier. Um, and I'm not off the top of my head. Can I give you a real great example? Um, the Yuba noodles would be a good example. Yeah. In it being a, a, a flour based pasta, it's it was a you know a, a tofu based pasta with a creamless sauce. So yes. That's that's so cool. I feel like um, now I totally want to run off and cook. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I can't believe I have to stay at work the rest of the day and um, and it's Passover, so I'm limited in what I can try today. But, uh, but now you've given me ideas to try uh, for next week. Um, well, I want to say thank you very much. I'm going to give just one more second for any last questions that come in. And everyone, I want to thank you for your fantastic questions as well. Shauna, I want to thank you so much for your time. You've been quite generous. I know that um, actually I'm ashamed to say that I brought you in here right before your lunch rush and you still were so kind to share your time and your experience. Um, and I know that a lot of the story about your career has been very inspiring to me and your food is delicious. So, <laughs> um, and I do have to say that at least one person is very jealous and wanting to try your waffles. Um, yeah. So now you've caused all kinds of frustration. We're all hungry. So I hope everyone has a great lunch. And Shauna, thank you again for your time. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.